Janice here from the Coming Out Party at NAB in Las Vegas. I'm here with Gabe Frost, Microsoft employee and executive director of the Alliance for Open Media. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? So what are we here for tonight? What's, what are we celebrating? Uh, so we're celebrating the launch of AV1 from the Alliance for Open Media. So tell me about the process. I mean, I learned a lot when I spoke to you and, and um, your compatriots last week. I mean, what? tell us how it all started. Tell us how it came together and, and you know why this is such an achievement. Yeah, so it all started about three years ago when a number of companies, Microsoft, Google, Intel, others, got together and said, uh, we really just want to go change the world. We want to do something different. And uh, the way that things were going, we were finding that it was really starting to become a bit complicated for like what was panning out in the area of video. And we thought, wow, a lot of us are contributing. We're innovators in this area. What if we had a bold idea and said, let's contribute all of our uh, invention in this area on a royalty-free basis and can we convince other people to be as crazy as us and uh, it turns out a lot of people were equally crazy and uh, that's how it got started so it was just this idea that we think that we have a bunch of invention in this area and we can do some really big things and we can really focus on building products instead of just staying down in the weeds and worrying about how much of our own stuff we can get jammed into a into a codec so you took I guess you took Thor from Cisco and you yep. took uh, Dala from Mozilla, you took all your old uh, VC1 and, gosh, I'm forgetting the names. <laughs> so you, it almost seems like you pick partners for their IP. It's like, yeah, we're building a codec, we need this, this, and this. I mean, how close to that is reality? It didn't really start that way. I mean, really it was about, um, there's, we wanted to make sure that we had innovators across the entire video ecosystem. And so from folks who have a bunch of experience building codecs, which matters a ton when you want to build a codec. Um, <laughs> folks who actually know how to productize these and folks that know how to build them not only in silicon but all the way up the stack so this is uh, folks down in silicon folks who build coding tools fill uh, folks who build operating systems and uh, developer tools and stacks all the way up into the encoding tool chains and whatnot and so it started from how do we bring together the best product minds in the world who actually build products that people love and how do we focus on solving real problems in that way? And it matters a lot that we all have a bunch of history building codecs so that we can bring a great deal of innovation to bear. So, so all that said, it's been a three-year process, lots of contributed IP. Where are we? You know, you've launched the codec, it's frozen. Where is it? When's it going to become usable? When will we see it being deployed? Yeah, so um, codecs always roll out in about four phases. And so typically starts out when you have a launch and you have a party like this and everyone says the bit stream is frozen, frozen. <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> um, and so it's about first driving clarity where you freeze the bit stream so that silicon can get going so that the folks who create tools like, um, you know, uh, all of the content creation tools that people use in their tool chains FFmpeg, in order to encode FFmpeg, all those types of folks. Um, and so it starts with creating that clarity, especially around like the licensing terms and all of those kind of details. And then the next phase is you start to see some optimization happen in the software. So we created a set of reference software. The goal of that software, um, as are most codecs when they first come out, it's let's make sure that we have the broad array of capabilities in the encoder and the decoder so that you can produce compliant bit streams and decode those bit streams. So that folks who are wanting to create commercial tools and whatnot not understand how to do it and what to look and what it looks like and we do that in a non-optimized way we want to make sure that everybody understands how it works and so we start with a bunch of optimization that happens first and then really where you see that software used in the first place is across desktop browsers so, so put that in terms of when 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 will we see and I'm putting you on the spot here and you can say <laughs> that the companies will make their own decisions yeah but when are we gonna see AV1 decode in Mozilla and Actually, IE is your software, or not IE, but Edge. Edge, yeah. Um, Chrome, when are we going to see Decode in so those So you're going to see a demo uh, tomorrow, actually, of it running in uh, um, Firefox. Okay. And so well, that's been available. for. I mean, that's been around. Yeah, so you already, what happens is, is you see it in these canary versions of the browsers where they're trying to, like, optimize it a little bit, find ways to actually do some offloading into the GPU that's on the system. And so um, you're going to start to see it this year. And so across all the major browsers, uh, that support HTML5 that are being able to consume content from like YouTube or you know on limited basis folks like Netflix and YouTube and others who are going to start encoding content making it available um, to those sockets on the endpoint in the desktop browsers is usually where it starts. So that's this year and then yep. it's like 12 months to hardware and then 12 months from that to devices is that the design? Yeah so so I mentioned unblock the ecosystem 
Second, optimize the software. You see it start showing up in desktop browsers first. Um, you start to see the encoding tools come out, um, like all the broad array of open source tools. The next phase is you start to see a great deal of um, optimization happening where you can do some offload, some parallelism with GPUs. That gives rise to the opportunity to see it start showing up in like pucks and TVs right, right. and set-top boxes so when, and when game is, consoles. Is that two years? I mean, it, where it's able... Oh, you, yeah, you're, you're going to see that over the next 24 months, okay. like across browsers and those. And then, and then you know, in the third, in the fourth phase is when you start to see it just showing up in all modern silicon. And we expect that to be around 2020 when you start to see that happen. So this has been, you know, fairly or unfairly, it's kind of been projected as like AV1 versus HABC. I mean, is that how it's going to play out? Or do you expect to dominate broadcast? Or are there going to be two different silos or coexistence? Or how's that going to work? I mean, there's always coexistence. I mean, the best thing that can happen in the industry when you have uncertainty and you really want to drive forward scenarios is competition. And so competition is great. We're going to see what happens as it goes. But we really, really are focusing on, as with any um, codec typically that comes out, it starts with the web almost always that's starts right. with the web, or at least any modern codec that's come out. And so there isn't anything unique and special about AV1 as it relates to the web versus any you know others or its use in scenarios like broadcast or real-time communications or whatnot. Um, but that's where we're really sort of focusing right now is let's make sure that we deliver on the scenarios with real-time communication, with on-demand, with live, game video, all the companies that you see that are involved have been contributing heavily in each of these scenarios. And let's really give rise to those. Let's focus on the optimization and, and uh, go from there. So I'll put you on the spot. I mean, one of the, um, <laughs> one of the criticisms from the head of MPEG was that free codecs will stifle innovation. You know, what's your sense of that? You know, um, I think, uh, Leonardo, right? I mean, we all have such a great admiration for Leonardo and MPEG and the work that everybody has done. And, you know, I think that, you know, he's reflecting on a tough spot that the industry is in right now with a lot of the... Where they put themselves in. The governing rules and the practices and whatnot. And so I guess what I'd say generally is that I feel like when we talk about monetization of innovation and we think that that can only happen in one way, that that's a fairly narrow view. And when you look at market forces over the last 15 years, what you're starting to see more and more of is uh, monetization happening further up the chain, further up the, the value chain. And so you've seen subscription services, you've seen folks be able to sell devices as a loss leader in order to focus on you know, content and services up the chain. And that's happening everywhere on the web. And so. You know, all the companies that are involved believe heavily that we can take all of our innovation that we have licensed in other venues and we feel like we can extract the right kind of value further places up the chain in order to, you know, do our best and go compete and get out there and build the best products possible without this, th you know, some of these some of these issues being the thing that slow innovation down. So now to put you on the spot and, and this is uh, probably stuff you don't want to talk about. Let me just ask, what's the... What's the um, level of manpower devoted at Microsoft to something like this, and what will happen over the next 12 to 24 months? Uh, I and mean, if, if you say it's private, that's fine. Well, I'd say that uh, you know, leading the engineering team that does all of this work, we have a substantial focus. Um, we look at uh, the work that we've done with AV1 and with AO Media generally, and we believe that's a future. Um, the engineering team generally has contributed. Uh, in a big way to what has come out with AV1 and AOM and the good engineering work is happening and we feel really good about that mm -hmm. as reflected by the set of products that you can go see on the website. We're talking about folks from Skype, Microsoft Teams, um, uh, Azure Media Services, uh, Edge on the browser side, the operating system, the apps. And, and that's the, what you mean by finding value. You're not selling a codec, but you're finding value within Microsoft for that codec and other products and services. Absolutely. When you want to deliver innovative experiences and you want to reach more customers in more places around the globe, compression matters a lot. And so in order for us to really, and other companies just like Microsoft who want to deliver incredible innovation and we want to reach more customers, it's more, about, it's more than just ultra high definition. It's about getting you know, real-time communication with your family across the globe. Right? It's about having more vibrant communication with your teams in all over, you know, all parts of the world. It's, you know, it's all that. I'm starting to cry. 
Listen, I know you've got uh, you've got some announcements to make. Thanks for joining us. It's, it's Absolutely, it's great talking to you. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Thanks a lot. Take care.